Hi again, Chris here. Here is the part one of two of my Doctor Who and the Master painting um, of John Sim and David Tennant. So first we're going to start with the Master. So let's get it going. Um, I started out with the sketch and I used a pen tool actually this time to just flat out all the colors and the shape. So I'm going to do this for the skin and then you saw I just dropped it on for the rest of the colors. It's basically just um, making a shape with a pen tool and then filling it with the colors that you want on different layers. Um, and I'll, right now I'm laying down you know, the shading colors and I use a spatter brush smudge tool to smudge everything out. Um, for those of you who are new to like watching me do this stuff, I use Adobe Photoshop CS3 to sketch um, sometimes in this instance to sketch and the color. So I'm toggling on the sketch layer um, so that I can see what I'm doing. I would, as I was doing this, I was thinking it would probably make more sense to actually like use the sketch in my drawing as opposed to like erasing it and kind of reinventing the wheel, but um, I don't know, it works for me. So anyway, uh, little tips, whenever you've got a bunch of different colors, like I have the hair and the shirt and the tie and the jacket and the skin, those are all on different layers, anything that's touching another color is on a different layer. Um, some people paint all in one, some people paint in different layers. Whatever works best for you. I just don't trust myself not to screw up, and so I give myself a little wiggle. But whenever you're working with these layers, after you get your um, outline all sorted, you want to make sure that you preserve your transparency, and um, that makes you stay in the lines, which is great. So right now I'm just coloring the eyes. Um, nothing special going on here. I just lay down color and smudge it out um, as usual. When you're using the smudge tool, you usually want to keep the opacity set to about 50%, and um, you want to try to stay steer clear of just like the standard hard edge round brushes because it tends to get blurry and weird. Right here, I um, I put another layer on top of the skin, and I did a I made a second layer to color overlay because I wanted to put like some paints and the shadow of like his beard and whatnot, but I didn't want to, I don't know, kind of be married to the level of color. Whenever you're not sure of like how much of a different color you want to add, it's what you can always, like I said, hop on a different layer, set that layer to overlay or multiply or darken or any of the other modes, and then just play around with the opacity of the layer as opposed to, you know, potentially screwing up the last hour of painting his eyeball. So that's, I'm um, laying down this, uh, turquoise-ish like teal color um, it looks kind of messy right now I go back in and fix it later I'm just kind of slapping it down there to see how I liked it um, and that kind of gives the impression of stubble or just like you know black black shadow or whatever so right now I'm just doing his lips I actually incorporated I took my own advice and used a little bit of the sketch that I made earlier um, and kind of pulled it into the picture a lot of people don't know the difference between the different uh, blending modes. Like, I see a lot of people get stuck on multiply, which is a good mode because um, it basically uh, progressively darkens, you know, the color that you're working on until it arrives at a point of being black. You know, basically is what the multiply does. So, um, you know, that's all well and good, but there are also different modes that I don't really see used that widely, like. Darken is a good one when you're trying to, you know, put down a slightly darker color, maybe, but um, the, like it's touching a color that you want to stay darker than it. You don't want to accidentally lighten something. If you use the darker color or darken mode, you only make things, you only make white colors darker. If you happen to paint over a color that's darker than, you know, the, the color that you're using, um, it doesn't affect it. Which is well, same thing, you know, the opposite of lighting. I'm working on the ears. As you can tell, I hate the ears. I'm terrible at them. I don't like them. There's nothing cute or feeling or fun to me about doing ears, but people have ears, so I have to draw them, so forgive my lack of talent at, the, at it, but, you know, we do what we can, so. There you just saw um, that bright explosion of pink and green was me, um, taking that color adjustment layer up to 100% so that I could see, you know, exactly what I was doing. Um, and then I notched it back down to like 40. So for a second there it looked really weird. That's basically um, what I mean to just lower the colors down. And right now I just smudged out his hair um, for the sake of 
changing the shape of the hair, I took the layer off the preserve transparency until I got those lines straightened out and then I put it back on. And I'm just doing a little finishing touches. Now I'm going to go into his clothes. I'm about to grab a fabric texture and just throw it over the um, jacket that I have on a separate layer. Whenever you want to put a texture or um, you know any sort of thing over another layer and you want it to be constrained by the borders of the layer that it's on top of, you just create a clipping mask. Um, on the Mac it's um, Command Option G I think. You put the, the texture that you want above the layer that you want it to um, be cut out of. And then you create a clip mask. I just knocked the opacity down like 40%. So that about does it. Um, finished up the first half of the Doctor Who and the Master. Come back for the David Tennant, the 10th Doctor. Okay, thanks. Bye.